Hi there, here's a short topic video looking at the conditions required for businesses to engage in price discrimination. Price discrimination is when a business charges a different price to different groups of consumers for the same good or service and also for reasons not associated with the costs of supply. We see price discrimination often in markets, it's, it's very very frequent, very common, but what are the conditions required for firms to be able to do this? Well, the first is that we don't see price discrimination in a perfectly competitive market because in that market structure, firms are, if you like, passive price takers instead of price makers. So monopolies have pricing power and indeed any firm in imperfect competition can engage in some shape or form in price discrimination. So the key is to have a downward sloping demand curve to have some pricing power. Second uh, condition is the ability to identify uh, groups with a different price elasticity of demand. This is of course essential, particularly for third degree discrimination. So a firm will aim to charge a higher price to the group with a price inelastic demand and a lower price to a group with a more elastic demand, in other words the group that's more price sensitive. If they can do that, of course, they can lift total revenue and they can become more profitable as a result. They can turn consumer surplus into producer surplus. Price discrimination also requires firms to have quite a lot of information, if you like, quite a lot of market intelligence about consumer behaviour, about buying habits, about the sensitivity of consumers to different market conditions. I'll give you an example of that in a second because the internet, of course, is giving companies a huge amount of data on consumer preferences and actual buying behaviour. Another really important condition is the idea of the ability to prevent what's called arbitrage, prevent resale. In other words, consumers, uh, business have to prevent consumers switching from one supplier to another. Uh, consumers might have purchased a product at a lower price and maybe resell it to consumers who would otherwise have paid a more expensive price. Now, there's a number of ways in which you can prevent resale. Uh, in other words, prevent resale in a secondary market. You might uh, sell a product to a consumer at a unique moment in time. For example, an airline ticket is a specific flight, a, a specific time from a specific gate can't be resold under any circumstances. You might be selling cheap discount rail tickets, which uh, can only be used on a very specific service checked by the conductor. Um, it might be a case where you can limit sales to particular age groups and you can use ID cards for uh, before, before purchase is made. Software businesses might offer educational users a, a discount, uh, but they have to require an academic email address, or there could be very, very specific uh, access verification code. So proof of identification, that kind of stuff, is a way of preventing resale. So what are the conditions? The conditions are easiest when a firm is able to find separate, distinct markets for a firm's product, different price elasticity of demand, and where the firm is able to prevent the resale. In other words, consumers paying a low price could then find other consumers and find a, a deal to be made. Cinemas, of course, engage in price discrimination all the time. Here's a, a price list from the View Cinema in Leeds. Peak off, peak prices obviously there. Different prices for families. Uh, some films are more expensive than others. That depends in part on the, the price that the distributors want to charge. And of course, there's a ticketing system whereby you can prevent the resale. So often used regularly by cinemas. And here's, a, here's an example of what I was saying before about the way in which the internet is, is creating so much information for businesses that they're able to, to go to the next level. So it's called hyper-targeting. It's where basically businesses could almost personalize the price or the range of prices on offer for consumers in you know in front of their screen at home. B&Q is currently testing electronic price tags, which almost recognise who the consumer is in store. Uh, some of the bucket shop uh, businesses like laterooms.com and booking.com, they can use the cookies that you leave on your website to hyper-target particular consumers. They can offer very specialised deals. So increasingly, with e-commerce, as people build up a digital profile, uh, businesses are able to, and the cost of course that information is pretty low for businesses, if you leave information on your websites, on your internet browser history for example, 
then businesses in theory can engage in what's called hyper price targeting. They can almost offer you personalized discounts based on the browser you're using, based on your previous search history, and based on other information that uh, you leave on the internet. Now this, this makes it easier for firms to price discriminate. The bigger question I suppose is whether this is a legal, in most cases it is, but also whether it's ethical for businesses to use this. So we've been through here some of the key conditions required for price discrimination to take place. Thanks for joining in.